for a gentleman who was the number one magician in the world, Doug Henning. I managed him in Hollywood. And in your book, you will find five or six stories about him because he was a professional human being. The professional human being knows how to treat people because they understand that some of the laws that I saw, not only Doug performing, but many of the people in the book, four Romanians are in the book, who are professional human beings. I, I wanted to inspire myself by writing about people from all over the world. So let me tell you one story you will read in the book. Uh, we did a Broadway show called Merlin on Broadway, and um, one day I got a call from a lady, and she said, it was uh, Monday, on our only day off, and she said, um, my son, my son's hero is Doug Henning, and I was wondering if he could meet Doug, and I said, well, ma'am, a lot of kids had their, um, their hero uh, as Doug Henning. And so I'm not sure that you'll be able to meet him personally. And she said, yeah, but he's a special kid. And I said, well, ma'am, every son of the mother is a special kid. And she said, yeah, but he's very special. And I said, well, why is he very special? And she said, he's dying of cancer. Oh. And I said, I will make it happen. So I will talk to Doug and I will call you tomorrow. So I talked to Doug Henning. Now here's a very busy person. Doing two shows a day, doing interviews, just really busy. Doesn't have time to live, you know, he said. Uh, and um, he said, absolutely. What hospital is he in? Okay, make arrangements. You and I will go there at that time. Maybe Debbie, his wife, will go along. And we'll bring him shirts and pictures of the tiger and everything. I will see him personally. A man giving up this time is a professional human being to me. The next day I got a call from the, the nurse on the ward after I talked to the, uh, to the mother and said, we are coming. So the head nurse at that ward calls me up and she says, I heard that Doug Henning is coming here. Yes. Well, we have 32 children here who have cancer. We would love it if he could perform for them. And so I said, let me talk to Doug. And we'll, so I talked to Doug and he said, good. We will see the boy first in one, on one to one. And then we will do a little group, some group magic. And uh, no problem. I called the woman back and she was elated. He's going to do that? Yes. <laughs> Giving his time. Third day, I get a call from our publicist. And she says, we have three newspapers coming, we have three TV stations coming, and we have all this publicity ready to go for the show and Doug's career. I said, I don't think so, but uh, let me talk to Doug. So I talked to Doug and he said, if the TV sh uh, station show up, and the newspapers show up, and any other person from the news shows up, I'm going home. I am not going there for our show, I'm not going there for me, I'm going there for them, the kids. Tell them not to show up, stay away. Now to me, this is a professional human being, right? I'm gonna give my time to these kids. And he did it many times, once in India for, uh, I told a family that it was a kid's birthday and um, I don't know if you knew Mrs. Sharma in, uh, in, in, in Delhi, but uh, I, I promised, okay, Doug is coming to do a little birthday celebration. 150 children showed up at the house. There were too many kids to put in the house. But this is just one simple example of what professional human beings do. Most of you are probably professional human beings because you understand some of the laws that I have in the book. The first law, everything you think, do, and say, you are the beneficiary of those things. 
If they are positive, you reap the positive effect. If it's negative, you reap those effects. Oh, sure. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> you see, I can be so quiet. <laughs> Două cuvinte pentru că am fost rugat de câțiva dintre dumneavoastră care nu știu engleză să spun pe scurt despre ce e vorba. Ca un exemplu de om, om într-adevăr om, de profesie om, Jim Maniona dă exemplul lui Doug Hennig, cu care a lucrat, considerat cel mai mare iluzionist al timpului său, care a fost rugat de mama unui copilaj să vină și uh, să-l vadă. Și a spus copilul meu e special, ce e special cu el are cancer. Și dacă a acceptat să uh, se ocupe de acest copil, din unul s-au făcut 30 și la acești 30 a fost gata să-și dea timpul și când a fost vorba să vină și televiziunile ca să arate cât de mărinimos este Dan Henning, a spus dacă vin televiziunile plec acasă. Asta înseamnă un de profesie om. Prima, prima, lege, prima lege este ce dai, aia primești. Dacă dai bucurie, primești bucurie. Dacă dai mâhnire, primești mâhnire. The second law And it's, it uh, spells uh, P-R-O in English, professional, P-R-O-H-B, professional, P-R-O, human being. So the first is P, primary, you're the primary beneficiary of everything, whether positive or negative. The second law, the uh, R, is The most important relationship we have is the one we have with ourselves. And always we are talking to ourselves, and I always ask, how many people talk to themselves? Raise your hand. Okay. The people who didn't raise their hand, they're going, do I talk to myself? I'm not sure if I talk to myself. I see other people talk to themselves, but I don't think I talk to myself. Everybody talks to themselves to the tune of almost a million words in a day. So how you relate to yourself, which means in psychology they call it the explanatory style, how you explain the world to you. So how you interrelate with the world is important because it's the basis of all other relationships. So if you're telling yourself during the day, it's such a horrible day then the mind-body connection takes over, the whole body agrees with you, and it creates a bad day for you. Chemically. Chemically. So the interconnection between the mind and body is so unique, and it is so intertwined that your body gets influenced by your mind, your mind influenced by your body all day long. Este important să ne spunem, fiecare își rostește How many million words you say? Almost one million. Un milion de cuvinte de zi. Îți spui ție. Și în funcție de ceea ce spui, aia ești. Dacă spui, a, ce problemă am, totul e negru. Dacă impulsul este pozitiv, și expresia va fi pozitivă. The O P R O, the O is outcomes. Every action that we perform has consequence. What we don't think about is that every action and thought and word has a physiological consequence. Each consequence is either health producing or disease producing. There's no neutral. Nobody says this. Hey, how was your day? Neutral. <laughs> It's absolutely neutral. Nobody says that. 
During the day, we are creating in our own physiology, our own world. So the story I tell is uh, from a samurai in Japan. The samurai, big, strong, has a sword. He says, you know, I want to know the difference between heaven and hell. So I will go to the monk. The monk's supposed to know. So he goes, a little monk, bald-headed, looking almost like you. <laughs> exactly like you. <laughs> Very good looking. <laughs> so he goes to the monk and he says, You, I want to know the difference between heaven and hell and that is your job to tell me that. <laughs> so the monk looks up at him. The monk says, I don't share that kind of information with imbeciles like you. <laughs> the samurai, what? Pulls his sword, I could chop your head off right now. You don't talk to me that way. And the monk says, this is hell. <laughs> the samurai looks, oh, oh I, I'm sorry. I, he, I apologize, I, I, I lost my temper, I, I apologize. That is heaven. <laughs> so, you don't need a certificate. You don't need a certificate. You create it right here, right now. You can create hell or heaven right here, right now yourself in your own mind. In your own mind. So this is P-R-O, these are the, the basic laws which guide every story in the book. Um, the H, this uh, H is help, help or helper. You cannot possibly help another human, human being without helping yourself. In the science of it, it's called helper's high, helper's high that when you help another or serve another, the body is filled with neuropeptides called endorphin, which gives you this euphoric, beautiful feeling when you give to anyone. The, you want to say? Yes. When you help someone, the body will react in a way that is beneficial. Adică această dai și ți se va da, este fizic, chimic, real. Tomorrow we will speak to the military. So the, my opening story, I will practice with you now, because it's in my book. Last Christmas time, I was on a plane, and I get to fly, fly first class a lot because I, that's all I do. All the airlines know my name. Hello, Jim. How are you? You're back again. So far, I've flown seven million miles. Seven million miles. I, I should. I do have a platinum card. I'm sitting in first class. First class gets on first, and then the back of the plane gets on second. So I'm sitting, I'm on the phone, and second wave of people gets all the way to the back is a soldier. And I look at him, he looked like the military. <laughs> Beautiful, just decked out, walking straight. And I'm watching him all the way to the back of the plane. I'm thinking it's Christmas time, he's probably coming from Iraq or Afghanistan. I cannot sit here and let him sit there. Who am I? I just came from a, a speech. What, it was so difficult for me to give the speech? No, he was coming for a war. And it wasn't his choice to go there. Politicians make the choice. He's just doing his job. After everybody boarded, I went back and I say, excuse me, sir, would you mind switching seats with me? And he said, no problem. Where are you sitting? And I said, first class. 
I, he said, I've never sat in first class. And I said, today you're sitting in first class. <laughs> Why? And I said, I want to show my respect and thanks for you and all of the military. And he began to cry. <laughs> now, I'm Italian, so I began to cry. <laughs> of course. Both of them crying. Huh? <laughs> but he, the he goes up to the, huh? What about the students? <laughs> oh, I will tell you, listen to the story. <laughs> so, I go back there, he goes to the front, I'm sitting in the back, high, I'm high. Why? I like myself. I like myself for doing that. Yeah. For giving to someone, serving someone. Huh? So it's called helpers high and helpers calm. Just after you do it, it's the opposite effect of the stress response. Completely opposite, you are healing the body. Anytime you give, you can feel it. You know this. You help somebody. You feel great. Right? The more you do it, I get addicted to it. I've done that more than once. Because after I was getting off the plane, everyone is hugging me. Thank you for doing that for this, the soldier. Uh, and the stewardess gave me a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> bottle of wine. <laughs> and when I got down to the baggage carousel, he's standing there waiting, but he had his hat in his hand. I didn't know what he had his hat off for. I came over, hey, how was it up there in first class? And he opened his hat, and he said, it was wonderful. And it was full of those little liquor bottles. <laughs> the stewardess kept giving him the little liquor bottles. So he was full, 20 bottles in his head. <laughs> but it's a story of giving, sharing. And it's powerful for the giver more than the person who receives. They're happy, but not as happy as you. You don't, you feel much better than that. You want to? So, the way I designed the book, I, I learned from a teacher of mine, uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. He, he would tell the story, he would tell you the theory, the point of the story, then he would have people do research on that point and find out that it has scientific backing, not just theory, it's scientific proof. And then, in my book, I have action ideas. Maharishi always turned insight to action. So, and professors in school would do the same. Here's the theory, here's the research. How do we now bring it to reality? How do we make it real? The gap between knowing and doing has to close. If you don't do, it doesn't matter if you know. Right? It would be the same gap between not knowing and knowing. Right? Same gap. So the, the last law, I have five laws. The last law is B, body. The body follows the mind. So every thought, every cell of our body is eavesdropping on that thought and changing its chemistry every one-tenth of a second based on that thought. Disease producing, health producing, success producing, lack of it. Happiness producing, a lack of it. Building the capacity to lead people, diminishing it. So the body follows mind. I use an example of the giant um, squid in my book. The giant squid, it's a best example, has a very refined nervous system. It lights up its physiology, and I mean light show. It lights it up. When it feels amorous towards another squid, I don't know how it does that, by the way. It doesn't look very good. But anyway, to it, it's beautiful. So it will light up in a way and just on its other side of the body, if it feels threatened by another squid, it will put ink into the water to scramble its memory. Uh, it flashes its emotions 
sometimes we flash them on our face. I'm angry, I'm happy, and, but most of the time we don't know what's going on in the physiology. But every second we're changing that physiology and it, the body retains that chemical makeup unless you reboot. Rebooting means you exercise. Rebooting means you rest your eight hours a night. Rebooting means you drink enough water to support the brain and the rest of the body, which is mostly water. Or maybe crying. Yes, maybe crying, crying, rebooting. That's rebooting. You release. It's a release, absolutely. Uh, being moderate in everything you do, especially the wine produced right here on campus, anyway. <laughs> It's good, it's very good. We tested it yesterday, I've made sure. I'm the official tester now here. Um, the uh, last one is the thinking. Thinking can either rebalance you or throw you out of balance. And I use a muscle testing technique to do that. Should I muscle test a little bit to show them? Yes. yes. How much time do I have? Enough. Enough. <laughs> You have to Thank you. Me. I have enough time. Um, let's see. Somebody I don't know. Somebody. Somebody I don't know. Would you like to come up? Yes, the handsome guy. <laughs> One up. All of you know. I wanted to say in a few yeah. words what you just said yeah. while you came. Yeah. Dar dacă cineva n-a înțeles, era vorba de gândul, fiecare gând își ne schimbă fiziologia. Asta este esența. Fiecare gând schimbă fiziologia. Deci ce gândești este extrem de important. Nu se vede, uneori se vede tristețe sau bucurie. Dar chiar dacă nu se vede, efectul este totdeauna. So It's going to show the mind-body connection. The mind-body connection, actually, in the uh, in the explanation of why the university gave me an honorary PhD, it said for really illuminating the mind-body connection and spreading this knowledge around the world. It was one of the aspects, and the second aspect was. Uh, for demonstrating leadership capability, especially in Romania for the last 12 years. So, and I appreciated that. That so, just as an example of this mind-body connection, you have the polygraph, the lie detector test, mm -hmm. right? Uh, anybody take the lie detector test ever here? Okay, a couple of you should. I think you should take it. <laughs> <laughs> But this shows your thinking. Your speech is just your thinking out loud. Your thoughts affect your physiology in a tenth of a second. I can see your blood pressure went up. Your maybe cortisol level went up if I'm measuring cortisol levels. Your galvanic skin response, you're perspiring more when you lie. You, uh, your heart rate might go up. So I ask you some questions and uh, I tell you, tell me the truth. Where were you born? What's your name? Ah, oh, this is what your body does when you tell the truth. Now I want you to lie for the next five questions. And ah, oh, this is what your body does when you <laughs> tend towards life. So it shows this connection that mind has with body. It's not disconnected. You can't. It's part of me. So I don't have the lie detector test and I don't want to know about lying truth. So I use what is called manual muscle testing since the early 70s. I tested, used the manual muscle test used by many doctors, doctor, uh, chiropractors, doctors of osteopathy. They test to see what is weak in the body. What I found out, wait a minute, the mind, if I use thinking, it also affects the body. So I will show you what I mean. It's a test that influences the mind. So the muscle test goes like this. I take the strong arm, you are right or left-handed? Right, okay, right-handed. 
I think even if you were left, Ceausescu said you have to be right. <laughs> Is that right? So most people are right-handed. They say, well, I, I was left-handed, but uh, I take the strong arm, I put the thumb down, that locks the elbow and isolates the deltoid muscle. Then I tell the person, you resist, don't let me put the arm down. Deci eu puneți rezistență, nu lăsați să vă apese mâna în jos. Da, acum o puneți din nou rezistență. Ok, don't let me put it down. <laughs> this totally imbalanced the system, so it weakens the physical structure. But what is more powerful is thinking. So this time, I want him to say in English or Romanian, I cannot do it. Spuneți, pe românește, nu pot. Nu pot. Nothing. <laughs> Now we change it. I'm totally confident. Sunt cu totul încrezător. Spune Am totală încredere. Sunteți căsătorit? Da. She makes me so mad. <laughs> mă enervează la culme. Mă enervează la culme. Ok, resist. <laughs> See, this is, um, if she makes him so mad, who has the power? <laughs> the women know this anyway. But we give our power to the person if we say, you made me mad. But in a tenth of a second, we just didn't realize we decided to get mad. So now we change, straight like that. I decided to get mad at her. M-am decis sau am luat eu hotărârea să mă enerveze. Eu am luat hotărârea să mă enerveze. Now he's got some strength. See, before, because I blame. If we blame or tell somebody this is a problem with you, not me. No, you decided to get No one makes us mad. We decide to get mad. But, boom, tenth of a second, so we think, it's that person, they did it. But no, no, you gave yourself permission to what I call mine. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Just briefly, because we, we need to put some fuel in the body and, and, uh, and eat. You will see seven lessons in the book that I saw over and over again with people around the world. So for instance, at the, the last story is about a priest that I work with in Colombia. <clears throat> This priest, 27 years ago, he saw that people dropped their kids off in, in these big cities because they couldn't afford them anymore and they knew they would join a gang and they would be able to, to live. But they had no money. So they dropped the kids off. So he was seeing this. I, I can't let this happen. So he made it his life's mission to save these kids. And he has now in 27 years, I go and work with him. I've been there several times. He's picked up 43,000 children in 27 years. And he creates this holistic program for them where he gives them a place to live, he detoxes them from the drugs that they're on. He said almost 100% were drug addicted. He educates them. They're taught, to, they're taught transcendental meditation. They're taught yoga. They exercise and they have the, uh, the rules and regulations of the Boys and Girl Scouts organization because he was a Boy Scout when he grew up. He's called the Saint of Colombia. They call him this. 
a living saint. And he is. If you met him, you'd say, wow, this is a saint. I think St. Andrew is coming up. Yes. Right? Yes. This guy could, should be called St. Gabriel. His name is Father Gabriel Mejia. And you'll see in the book online, you can go and see him online speaking and being with the kids. It's unbelievable. You, you will not, if you saw him in person, you would not believe him. He contains seven laws. One, uh, uh, not uh, seven lessons that I learned. One, you do what you love. You don't work in a job or a profession that doesn't access your strengths and talents. You'll be unhappy. And the research says it affects your heart and your cardiovascular system. People say this <coughs> phrase in all cultures, my heart's not in it. Right? In no Hungarian, no German, no Romanian, my heart's not in it, then your cardiovascular system gets affected by it. So the number one reason for a heart attack is job dissatisfaction. Pretty simple. The second, uh, the second lesson is about that service I talked about. It's from here I am to there you are. And it's all about helpers high and about serving people. You perform your magic, I call it. And the second lesson, in service of other people. The third lesson is stop going out of your mind on a regular basis. <laughs> Do you, you want to say anything about those first three? Oh, excuse me. How old are the children? Uh, the children go from age three and four to like 12, 13, 14. Can you believe people would drop kids off, children? You'll, you would see them online. It's interesting because uh, many of these uh, children have an uh, astral uh, body form. It's uh, very easy to uh, manipulate. Yes, so oh, it's, uh, absolutely. Because they haven't astral body developed. And the problem with, with those, those children are that they, because they can be affected by other people, they become prostitutes, drug addicted, stealing and, and, and joining gangs and stealing for the gang. But in, in, in this time, it's very easy to vampirize this child. That's why we go to the other side and let the priest and people who do good things with them. Because they're in this vulnerable state, we, we protect them. And that's his job. He chose it. So he's performing his magic in service of other people. And you don't go out of your mind on a, that, this is going into the stress response. I call it going out of your mind. The blood goes from the cortex to the arms and legs to run or fight. So there's no uh, energy or blood left for you to make the right decision, analyze properly, plan properly. You have to use your CEO properly. You were the doctor was talking about the CEO of the brain. So TM, <coughs> counters you going out of your mind and prevents you from going out of your mind on a regular basis. Uh, you've all noticed it's very hard to communicate with a person who is temporarily insane. And that's what we get when we go into fight or flight. The leader must be very responsible. Yes, absolutely. With the child. Absolutely, very responsible. They are, it's unbelievable how responsible they are. Read about that last chapter. He's called the valedictorian in my book because you're getting your PhD instead of D, which I got yesterday, by the way. You should be addressing me as Dr. Vietnam. Anyway, but it's a, now a PhD, professional human B. So my book is uh, set up like a course. And in the end, you get your PhD. Um, and then just quickly, uh, the fourth lesson is about imagination. Uh, See Yourself on Broadway, it's called, because of Doug Henning's wife, who told Marishi that uh, he, she wanted to be in a play with Doug, but it's Broadway so big. And he said, big? Spun the globe and stopped it at Manhattan. That's big? That's a dot. <laughs> 
Stop thinking so small. Think big. Wrap your mind around Broadway. And what she found, and she got the job, she got a part in the play, um, not being a professional actress. So what she found is, what you believe, you create. So we say this phrase, I can't see myself doing that. Or, I can see myself doing that. We are using the imagination to mold our reality. So don't misuse your imagination by worrying. Worrying is negative goal setting. The, the fifth law is don't compromise your values. Not law, lesson. People don't compromise what they believe in. And there are so many stories in there about people not compromising their value. When you compromise your value, you don't like yourself. Because you know what you value, and when you break that, you don't like you. What happens is the immune system breaks down and turns against you, allowing for things like cancer or just a, a cold or a flu. It lets it in. It breaks down the barrier. Number six, if you don't know where you're going, more speed won't help. <laughs> you want to speak about this? Uh, about the last or several? Uh, uh, there's uh, imagination, then there's values, comfort, don't compromise values, and then there's, you got to know where you're going. Uh, it's important to realize this. Do it. So you need to rehearse perfectly because scientifically it says that when you're mentally rehearsing, you're firing the same neurons as if you were doing that thing. Athletes know this. They practice mentally more than physically. I can see myself doing this perfectly. And the more I see, mentally rehearse, the more chance I will have to fire those same neurons perfectly in my performance. Ați observat poate atleții când sar la înălțime, de exemplu. Îi vezi cum repetă, de fapt, în gând fiecare pas și fiecare mișcare. Pentru că fiecare pas și fiecare mișcare repetată în gând, acest în gând, petrecându-se petrecându în gând acest lucru, aceiași neuroni sunt activați. Aceleași părți ale creierului sunt puse să funcționeze. Și atunci, performanța respectivă, actul în sine, este mult mai eficace dacă s-a trecut prin acel, pe același drum, dacă drumul a fost deja străbătut. And last one. The last one is, you must charge and recharge your mind, body, battery. Through all the things I mentioned, exercise, rest, water, you know the basics, eating properly, But also, meditation is the best way to recharge. And I asked a panel of doctors once, how do I get people, especially women, because women take care of everybody else and they're last, right? So I asked the doctors, what do I tell women? And some men are this way too, they take care of everybody, but they don't exercise, they don't watch their diet, they, but they take care of everybody. What do I tell them? So the doctor said, what do they tell you about the oxygen mask on the airplane? Put yours on first, and then on the children you enjoy. <laughs> oh, then maybe they don't say that second. <laughs> But you need to energize yourself, especially all of us who are here. You aren't coming here today for this, unless you want to be a better leader. Leaders manage their energy first, and then they manage other people's energy. You cannot energize people if you're not like this doctor right here. <laughs> he was full of energy, wasn't he? You, I got energized listening to him and I didn't understand a word he said. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was translating for me, but I was getting energy from him. Didn't you? Like, wow, this is what our job is as a leader. Energize the people around us and have it be a calm, energy, a calm energy. Ultimul, ultimul lucru, ultima lege sau ultima concluzia a cărții este că trebuie să-ți încarci 
bateria acestei conexiuni minte coni și să o faci cu regularitate. În așa fel încât să poți da energie, dacă nu ai energie, de unde să dai? Deci ca să poți să ai această posibilitate de a da, care are efectele pe care le-am menționat înainte, că îți face bine când dai, ca să poți să dai, trebuie să ai. Cum ai? Încarci bateria. Cum o încarci? Cu liniște. Cu, li cu cât e mai profundă liniște, cu atât bateria se încarcă mai bine. Și apoi poți să dai pentru că ai. Iar dacă legătura cu rezervorul infinit de energie care în tine este permanentă, atunci este dat tot timpul. Tot timpul. Fără barieră. Și nu se cheltuiește nimic. Crește tânt. The last thing I will say is that I hope you get inspired by the people I wrote about, especially the Romanians. <laughs> in that book, uh, because that's why I wrote, they inspired me. You will read about Simona Baciu uh, in Cluj, who came to my class uh, 11 years ago, I think, and said, I want you to come to my school. I went to her school, she had two rooms. And she said, I want to have the best school in Romania but I don't know really how to go about it. I started this school with 100 Deutschmarks. <laughs> She sold something to people in Germany and got the book and uh, got the money and started the school with 100 Deutschmarks. Oh. And so we are in the school, I went to see it, <coughs> and she gave these, li these little things that said, happy kids uh -huh. to me. But while we were there, I said, You want to have the best school, so you need a bigger place. This is two rooms. How big do you want it? She said, well, I need to think bigger. I said, you have to think big in order to get big. So she said, many floors, a whole building. And I said, now, now we're talking. Can you see it? Yeah. I can see the building with many floors. Five years later, This lady comes up to me in my next class in Cluj. She says, do you remember me? I look at her. Huh. Maybe. Happy kids. <laughs> <laughs> She said, that's right. Symbols. Happy kids. She said, I want you to come to my school. <laughs> okay. So we followed, Petro and I followed to the school. And there's a big, beautiful, brand new building. Huh? And, and so we got out of the car and I said, oh, good, what, what floor do you have? And she said, no, this is my whole building. <laughs> <laughs> and what's that say? What's the banner say? Oh, best school in Romania of the year. <laughs> right? Very inspiring. The guy in the back there, Petro, he's not paying attention. <laughs> But because he's heard this a thousand times, but he's in the book. He's a famous guy. <laughs> Petru used to introduce me, and I could not hear a word he said. <laughs> he was so scared when he first started introducing me ten years ago, I couldn't hear a word he said. Today, I can't shut him up. <laughs> Now he is confident. He kept doing it. He kept facing this fear of speaking in public, which most people have. And he can do it now very powerfully. He also never flew in a plane. So I sent him an email. When are you going to fly in a plane so you can come and visit me in the U.S.? Okay, I will do it, because he's afraid of heights. So the next thing he sent me was a video of one small plane taking a picture of another small plane that he was flying. <laughs> was he scared up there? Of course! He peed his pants! No, he <laughs> no, but he flew the plane. He went up. He, he did it. Now he has to do it many more times before he said he'll go over the ocean. <laughs> but anyway, I want you to be inspired like I was by all these people But also, wow, so there's some scientific research behind this, each one of these experiences. It's not just happenstance, it's scientifically verifiable. Uh, any other questions you have, please email me. Um, you can ask me at any time uh, during the conference. And, uh,
I hope you enjoy your lunch. And uh, do you want to? Do you want to? Yes. Yeah. Cred că până la urmă o să întârziem, nu o să fie unul și jumătate. Dar acum, dacă cineva vrea să ia aceste cărți, tot un profesor 